G'day ladies and gents, and welcome to War Thunder with Mags, and welcome to my first impressions of the Supermarine Attacker. The Attacker is a battle rating 7 British jet fighter added in patch 1.49 as the final aircraft to the new British fleet air arm. It also has a rare tail dragon design set up, as you can see. Its stack card stock reads at a maximum speed of 859km an hour at sea level, with a maximum altitude of 39,985 feet. A 26.9 second turn time and a climb rate of 4,232 feet a minute. Armaments are 420mm Espano Mark V with 624 rounds of ammunition over 4 guns. It's equipped with an air brake, although you'll be forgiven for not noticing them straight away when I deploy them. And of course, being a fleet air armed jet, it's carrier based and as such is equipped with a tail hook for carrier landings. However, at this time it's not able to take off from War Thunder's current carriers, so it receives a low altitude air spawn on carrier maps and on carrier launches. It also has the distinction of being the first jet aircraft to enter fleet air arm service, although it had a very short service life, with its first flight being in 1946, entering service in 1951 and being retired from fleet air arm service by the end of 1954. So that's enough of the history lesson. Is this plane any good? Well, it's a funny one. The plane feels okay, but it is stock. All my first impressions are done with stock aircraft, obviously. The whole time you're flying it, however, it feels like it could be great. But it just never seems to get there. It doesn't really matter how hard you push the plane, it never quite makes it to greatness stock. It's good, but it's just not quite great. And a bit of a shout out to Slick B, you'll see him in the background there at the moment. For those of you who have seen his latest video on the Arado, this is the other side of his final battle, where you can see me flying in the background. So, the strengths of the attacker. It's fast. It is very fast for a stock aircraft. The 850 kilometers an hour is a bit of a lie. This plane will do 950 if you incorporate a dive. It'll cruise comfortably below 10,000 feet at 700 kilometers an hour. Above 10,000 feet, its engine performance does fail a little bit, and it does drop back to uh, around about 5 to 600, with 4 to 500 above 15,000 feet. So if you want to keep this aircraft fast, you've got to keep it low. Now, its energy retention in a vertical climb is okay. It's not great but it's good enough that you can do some vertical fighting in it providing you're aware of the energy levels of the aircraft that are around you. Roll rate is pretty standard for a jet aircraft, it's nothing incredibly exceptional. One thing I have found however at high speeds it doesn't seem to roll around its long axes like it does at slow speeds. The faster it goes the actual central axis of the aircraft seems to increase and it seems to roll around a point that sits at about the cockpit. This means getting guns on target while moving at speeds in excess of 700 kilometers an hour can be a little bit difficult, and especially considering that the guns are mounted in the wings and not mounted in the nose, it can make shooting a little difficult. I was just following Slick B a little bit here, waiting for his backup to arrive, and a 262 has shown up, so I'm going to engage the 262 first. Now turning in the attacker, it turns okay, but I wouldn't call it a turn fighter. It will break its wings if you put in excess of 9 G's on at a speed higher than 800 kilometers an hour, but outside of that situation, it will turn well, it will compression lock before it actually rips off its own wings. 840 kilometers an hour, first pass on the guns, didn't give it enough lead and actually got clipped by the P-80 that was behind there, but that was my fault. Roll it over and you can see the plane not wanting to roll straight down its axes, and it deployed the air brakes, and you'll notice you can't see anything sticking out of the fuselage. That's because the air brakes are only one inch slats that stick out of the top and bottom of the wing, just to of the control surfaces near the wing roots, and that is most certainly one way to take out a 262. It's not the way that I would do it, but each to their own. So, as I was saying, energy retention in a turn. If you put the attacker 90 degrees over at about 850 kilometers an hour and you do a full 360 elevation turn, this plane will come out of that turn still doing over 700 kilometers an hour, but its turning circle is not incredibly tight. Using the air brakes, you can tighten the circle up but you're never going to turn with, say, a Meteor or a 262. This makes the aircraft's energy retention in a turn very good for using the turns to reposition for a boom, but not very good for direct turn fighting. I would stay at, at least a minimum of one kilometer in a turn from your target, making sure you stay behind and use the turning energy retention in order to reposition for fast slashing attacks or if you can get higher than the target, boom and zooming. Now, vertical fighting in the attacker. The attacker's energy retention is okay in the vertical, but it is not great. As I said earlier, you really need to be aware of the energy that your opponent is at before going into a vertical fight. And here's a perfect example of that. 262 closing in, he's just come out of a burst climb. He's not particularly high in energy. So turn off to the left. I'm going to roll through. I want to cut around behind him and force him to climb, and then I'm going to take this plane into the vertical. 
he's going to try and do the same thing and you can see by his crossing speed that he wasn't particularly high. Hold the vertical, I'm only doing 260 kilometers an hour here and I'm going to stall back onto his tail and you can already see he stalled out trying to follow me into the vertical as well. Dip the nose back over, allows me to dive back down. Now the dive speed on the attacker is incredibly good, you can see I'm already punched back out to 400 kilometers an hour, drop in on his tail, he's still got no energy and boom, first kill. Now the guns on the attacker, 420mm Espano Mark V's, incredibly good guns, but the attacker starts with the standard problem of all British aircraft, the default belts. There is a high explosive round, which is what you just saw decimate that 262. When it hits, it's lethal, but the stock default belts for British aircraft also contain a practice round and a tracer. Both of these shells are almost useless. When they hit, sometimes they will do damage, most of the time they will just spark. So it's entirely possible that you'll line up the guns after having positioned yourself for a high speed boom and zoom, pull the trigger and drop a practice and a trace around into the target and have it do absolutely nothing. Thankfully the 20mm belt unlock is only a tier 1 upgrade on the attacker, so it should be one of the first things you go about unlocking. Once you do have the belts unlocked, ammunition selection is obviously entirely your choice. Omnipurpose if you're after tracers, air target if you're fine without. The good news on the guns is even without the gun upgrade, they don't spray too much. They're fairly accurate and fairly well grouped, so the guns themselves are not reliant on having the gun upgrade, they're not going to shotgun. It's just the shells are largely ineffective until you have the new belts unlocked. But that's a standard thing. If you've been researching British aircraft or British jets before, you're well familiar with this problem. It's something you're already going to be accounting for. Now one final thing to note on the attacker itself, and I'm sure you've noticed it in the upper left hand corner, this aircraft is overheating constantly. Almost from the moment you leave the runway, this thing is going to be in the amber. And it doesn't matter how fast you keep the aircraft. Sitting at over 755, it will be sitting on amber. It won't go into red, but it will constantly be overheating itself. It isn't actually a problem. Even pushing this aircraft in the red, I've never received an overheat timer on it. If you don't like having the aircraft in the red, two or three seconds at 0% throttle, then punch the throttles back to full, will put you back to white. The aircraft will go amber again within about 60 seconds, but it's easy enough to cool down if it does become a problem. Overall, having the temperatures on high doesn't seem to affect performance at all. And this is going to be a very good example of how to fight in the attacker. I've just sounded a 229 attacking ground vehicles. I was watching his tracers strike at the tanks from a distance and I saw his notifications in the bottom right hand corner. He is completely unaware of my approach. Pushing into the red line at 950 kilometers an hour. I have never torn this thing's wing off from overspeed. Take the lead, pull the trigger and second kill. Don't bother turning out, just keep the speed on maximum. Shallow climb, boom back out of the area. Now there's an Arado behind me and I was considering turning this plane back over to make a strike but there was a meteor on his tail and he's already been dealt with. So in fast, out fast, using the attacker's excellent speed seems to be the most effective way of using this thing in combat. There are other tricks you can do if you need to but honestly it is probably one of the fastest battle rating 7 aircraft in the game and it'll be really interesting to see how the attacker performs once it has full engine upgrades unlocked. So into the vertical, gain a little bit of altitude, I want to push it out to 10,000 feet and then roll over. 10,000 is a good area, there are two enemy aircraft remaining and I suspect they're both 262s from what I've seen floating around the battle so far. 262s start losing engine performance at about 10,000 feet, so it's probably a good altitude to begin engaging them at in the attacker because you don't start losing engine performance till you start hitting around 15. You lose a little bit but not much. But it doesn't matter, first one has been spotted and it's on the ground, two aircraft approaching in. That's a dead 262, it's not even worth a heavy dive. And so there was one, and I wasn't entirely sure where he was until he presented himself. RAAF Squadron. G'day RAAF guys. And he's making a dive in on the aircraft that just hit the 262 on the runway. So, using speed again, push it out past 600 into 700 kilometers an hour to close distance rapidly. Probably a 10 to 15 degree dive, that's all you need. This thing dives like it's afraid of heights, so just a slight dive is all you need to rapidly accelerate and catch a 262. 3.8 kilometers out and closing, pushing past 850 kilometers an hour now. He is flying away from me at the moment, so that's a 262 flying away from me, and you can see the rate of closing. As he begins to make a right hand bank, that's going to accelerate again. Start trying to bring the guns around fast enough to get a lead shot. Take a little bit of flack there. And you can see the plane is rocking quite a lot in the turn. This is how the attacker handles in a high speed turn. Take the lead, 
not quite enough, but I'm still doing 870 kilometers an hour despite the bank, so I'm going to continue my turn. The speed is going to allow me to go wide and pulling at about 8 Gs any harder and I would break the plane. This will allow me to fall back on his tail. He's banking hard left, going to take a lead again. But you can see how hard it is to aim these guns at high speed because the plane is constantly rocking back and forth in the turn. Take it into the vertical. If I tried to turn back, he would have cut inside of me there. So into the vertical, roll the plane over and re-dive on target. Now I'm going fast, so I'm going to go slightly off at about a 45 degree angle in the turn, banking down. If I went straight through, I'd probably pancake. Back into the level for approach. He forces the plane back into a right hand bank, move to take a lead again. This time I have a good lead. Line up, pull the trigger, and if you look very closely there, I actually hit him. But I hit him with tracer and practice, so I got nothing but sparks. Take the attacker straight into the vertical again. Now this time I'm going to drop below 400 kilometers an hour as I go through the loop, so I'm going to continue the loop straight through and deploy air brakes to arrest my speed, allowing me to get the nose over without hitting the ground. This is going to give me an ideal position to get guns on target. Drop down, take the line, I've got all the dive speed to accelerate, but the Meteor had a good line on him too, takes a shot, hits the right wing, and down he goes. And I'd just like to give a shout out to Rico of RAAF Squadron. 262A1U4 against three targets and you made us work for it. That was some bloody good flying, mate. And that's the end of the match, so let's go through to the results. So, third place for the team with two kills. Scram Forces Rescuer, Professional X2, Shadow Strike Streak X2, and the Baying Donkey Emblem. 47,370 silver lions and 3,303 research points and another chunk out of my fuselage repair. So overall, not a bad match for one of my first flyouts in a stock aircraft. Now the Attacker FB1, what's my conclusions on it? Well, it's an okay aircraft, it really is. I'm actually really enjoying flying it. And that's a really good place to start. With upgrades, I think the Attacker FB1 is going to be an exceptional plane. However, it desperately needs those ammunition belts unlocked as soon as you possibly can. They should be the first thing you unlock as soon as you have access to unlocking them. This could have been a three kill match if those shots didn't spark, and those shots sparked entirely because of the default belts. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video. Click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.